Jarvis, start battle playlist. Luke, what are you playing? It's Come Thou Found. It's a hymn! Yeah, dude, it's my jam. Oh, on your left. Hey, have you ever thought about some of those older dialect in those lyrics? Yeah, and like what some of the words mean? Like the word Ebenezer. I mean, tell me that the first thing you think of is not a Christmas carol. What? No, I think of Scrooge McDuck. What? You think of the Disney Christmas special? Yeah, it's the best one. Which one do you think of? Jim Carrey. The CGI version? It, it's the nose. I mean, it's so big. You tried deleting that from your memory. Look, clearly the line is not referring to Charles Dickens. Clearly. I mean, I know it's in scripture. Right. Jarvis, pull up 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Oh, oh, I know this one. So at a time when the Israelites were up against the Philistines, Samuel prayed to God, asking him to deliver his people, to spare them. And so then he sacrificed a burnt offering. And so as the Philistines were approaching, um, God, he thundered with a mighty sound that rendered the Philistines defeated. Kind of like this. Nice. But instead of saying something like, God, you should lead with that next time, Samuel said, so far, God has helped us. And then right then and there, he set up a stone. He raised a big stone. And then he called this stone Ebenezer. Right. And I know you, Rick. Just don't get too caught up in the fact that the stone is named Ebenezer. Yeah, it's Samuel's pet rock. Instead, focus on what he actually did with the stone. The stone is a marker. It's a visual statement of something that happened. It's kind of like a tombstone, but instead of marking death, it marks life given by God. And anyone who saw these stones would know that God did something here. And this isn't the only one. They're everywhere. And they're markers of God's active work in his creation. So in the New Testament, it actually refers to these new stones. So remember that Samuel had made a burnt offering, a sacrifice. And this actually made way for God's sovereignty, for God to help. But remember what Samuel said, so far God has helped us. This offering was just a temporary solution. There's a greater redemption that we all need that's more than just from the Philistines. So that ultimate sacrifice became Jesus dying on the cross. Okay, hold on a second, let me think about this. So. Samuel knew that he had to make a sacrifice, and then after that, make a marker. But for us, post-Jesus, we, we already know that the sacrifice has been made in Jesus, right? But now, we need to know that we have to make a new marker. Right, and in 1 Peter 2, 4, it says that we are these living stones. We are those markers being built up into a spiritual house. And it's like we're a symbol for what Christ is doing and how he is transforming his creation. So when we sing, here I raise my Ebenezer, really what we are saying is that I am a living stone, that I am a marker for Jesus Christ. And in all that I do and in how I live, it is all a reflection of what Christ has done and it is all in an act of worship to him. Oh, that makes perfect sense. I can see why this is your jam. How cute.